So you decided you wanted to make a MIDI pack or you made a really cool project with a bunch of stuff that you want to save and be able to pull into another project later. What's the best way to save that MIDI information? Well, I'm going to show you. Let's get started. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. There is two different ways to save MIDI and multiple different ways to import MIDI information. We'll start with our piano roll. So in our piano roll, we have an option for file, save score as. And when we save our score as something, like how I have Funk Walk Bass, for example, we can then, if we ever want to open it, open score. Now, the location this is going to actually save in is in our scores over here in our browser, right here down at the bottom. You can see Funk Walk Bass. So I've gotten to this new pattern. And let's say I want to load in the Funk Walk Bass. Well, there's two ways to do this. I can either open my piano roll and just drag it in. And now I have this little bass going on. Right? Or I can go here, file, and I can open score or I can import MIDI file. Right? Now, I'm going to show you the difference between the score and the MIDI file. If I export as MIDI file, you're going to see we have the same thing, our funk walk base in the same exact location, our scores. Here's the difference the difference is our file type. So if I come over here, if you noticed, I had two of these. This is because I saved these earlier when I was testing everything and verifying everything for this video. If I hit Show File Extensions, you're going to see we have a .fsc and a .mid. So here is the difference. MID is MIDI. FSC is FL Studio Score. And that's important because FSCs can only be recognized by FL Studio. Meanwhile, MIDI is recognized across pretty much everything. So if you are doing cross-platform, you want MIDI file right here. Now, import MIDI file will do pretty much the exact same thing as actually dragging, and it'll just put it there. If I were to delete all this, I can drag it onto the channel, or I can drag this into a new channel. The new channel, I can add whatever sampler or anything I want here, and then I'd be good to go. Now, what about if you have an entire project full of MIDI and you want to export your whole project as MIDI file? Well, there's a way to do this, and you're going to want to, before you do it, save a new version of your project because this will mess up your entire project if you do not. You've been warned. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll go Tools, Macros, and we will prepare for MIDI export. This is going to turn every single one of your audio files and every single one of your VSTs that has MIDI information into a MIDI out. MIDI out is a plugin for transferring MIDI information in FL Studio. So pretty much you're going to lose all of your instruments and all of your sounds in your project, but it'll allow you to export and output MIDI information, hence MIDI out. So if we click this, we even get a warning. And here is all of our MIDI outs. Let's close them by clicking F12, just to quickly get rid of all of that. As you can see, I don't have any more instrument files left. So now that I've done that, if I go File, Export, and MIDI File, I can now save this entire project as a MIDI file, which will contain all of the MIDI information for every single channel in here. And you don't really need to check any of this stuff. I just checked this because I want to make sure I don't accidentally forget it's off later. That was for another video. But now we can do the mode as pattern or full song. I'm going to do full song just because, and we will click start. So now that that's exported, let's say we want to open all that MIDI information in a new project. We have a new project here. I can file, and we click import MIDI file. We can open video practice duplicate, which is exactly what we had. 
And we have a few options here. So I will go over these options as quick as I can. It'll ask us which tracks we want imported. We can do just one or we can do all of them. Now I want you to notice if I accept this with all 16, we'll get everything loaded in here. If I, however, get rid of all of those and import again and move this down to, I don't know, three, for example, we will no longer get our entire project. However, interestingly enough, our ratio here to how many of these loaded versus how many channels we chose was not one to one. So we have five channels loaded, but we only chose three MIDI channels. Now, I know that there is generally 16 MIDI channels for your controller. So a lot of controllers, you can cycle through those different channels, and that'll let you control different things with the same controller. It's that way because there is a maximum of 16 channels that can fit in a MIDI cable for outporting information to something like your DAW. Now, that aside, I don't really understand how that translates into the way our MIDI file is saved and the way five of these opened up when we chose three channels. But I wanted you to know, as we turn the channels down, less of our channels in our channel rack actually opened up. Delete those, import MIDI, nope. Boom, open. Now, next options, channel type. The things that just opened up were flex channels. So flex is a type of plugin for adding an instrument to the MIDI information and interpreting the MIDI information. We also have MIDI outs. MIDI outs, you will have to assign to specific instruments because it's just for MIDI information. It is not actually a virtual instrument or any kind of generating plugin, no signal is generated. So you have to send that information out to one of your plugins or generators. MIDI out with Fruity LSD. Fruity LSD is an effect you can put in your mixer track and it's going to have a bunch of channels that you can actually route your MIDI outs to. And each of those channels is going to have a slot where you can choose a different type of instrument, and Fruity LSD is basically just used for playing MIDI information. So I would stick with Flex or MIDI Out and then just replace those with whatever instrument you want to replace it with. Now, our next options underneath is Start New Project. So we can either merge this into our existing project or start a new one. We have Create One Channel Per Track, which is supposed to make one channel per MIDI channel or per track. And that evidently, even though it was marked, didn't work. We did not get our one-to-one -one ratio as said before. If anyone can explain that to me, please do. We have realign events. So any silence or any space before any MIDI information actually happens, this will get rid of that um, if it's at the beginning. We have set mixer tracks for new channels, which is really cool and very efficient. Every single channel that opens up will get its own mixer track. Import time signatures. If you had any different time signature changes or different time signatures for the MIDI files in there, it'll actually bring those in to your project, which is pretty cool. And if you didn't know, you can change time signatures in FL Studio by going to the project settings page. We also have import zero velocity notes. So by default, if your note has zero velocity to it, it's considered not triggering or like it doesn't trigger the MIDI. If you click this, it'll import zero velocity notes. It's not often you'll have this, but sometimes people use zero velocity notes to like rig samples and patterns, for example. And so this is something in special cases you may want on. So I will accept this. And very quickly, if you want to change time signatures, it's in here. You can do it right there. So this can also be done in the playlist. If you open this up, we have it right here. And this sets the time signature. We can change our time signature by going set time signature, change it to whatever we want, 3, 8, for example. And if you look, that has completely changed the way our playlist is set in here. And we can automate this by setting new marks to change between different time signatures. Now, this is synced with all of these other ones. As I change it, it'll change in the other ones at this exact moment in time. Now. Each pattern, though, this is completely independent. So I can change pattern here, and I have one set at 4-4 four, four because I set it that way. 
and this one will stay at 38. And that is independent of our actual project time signature. And so if you have that kind of information in your MIDI stuff and you're getting intricate like that, you can actually carry that over into your other projects and within your MIDI information. Now, the event in which you might see zero velocity notes would be something like this, where I have our first note playing with normal velocity, this note set to zero velocity, and our track here set to cut itself. As you can see, this note here is acting as a note off for our melody. If I take it away, right? And so we can choose whether or not we want to import that information in the MIDI. Now, if you want to create a folder for all these MIDI files, you just create your folder and you go to that file settings page and add it here. And it is now in my browser as MIDI stuff. Now, how is importing this into the whole project? I can actually bring all this information into one piano roll. I can do this the same way we dragged in our scores or our MIDI information here by just grabbing and dragging. And now I have one different option, blend with existing data. And what blend with existing data is going to do is if I were to drag this into something that already had MIDI data, I already had a full piano roll, I can decide to leave everything in that piano roll by clicking this or completely delete it all and import the new stuff. And if we click accept, you can see I have my entire song's MIDI information all right here. And now while I'm sure that most people wouldn't expect this MIDI stuff to have that many options and take that long to talk about, it does, and I hope we covered it all. <laughs> so we can either save MIDI as a single file in the piano roll, or we can save an entire project as a MIDI file. And both of those can be pulled up later by either importing that MIDI, by going file import, or by dragging it into a piano roll or importing it into a piano roll specifically. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.